Okay. Sure. Okay. First of all, we start with a finesse white cape kamikatsu. I have found other hooks, you know, that the top quality hooks that, that are suitable for this. But this is what I started on, and it worked really well. Didn't drop a tiger on it, so I've obviously got a lot of confidence in, 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 the, in the hook itself. Um, I think the short shank also helps with the fly not fouling. So, you know, it works. I haven't, so I'm not going to change it. Um, obviously, you know, you start with a thread base, as all flies do. It's a size 10. This obviously you can then modify to the pat, to the pattern that, that you want to do. I mean, I believe if you tie this on a smaller hook, you can even do something that's suitable for trout. You know, so I haven't tried it, but I'm actually going to after Gavin made a suggestion. That's my next try, just to see how small I could get it to work. Then material that we're using, the original coming comes from the EP website. And it's a trilobal carpeting fiber, that, or that's just if, if my research is correct. So, you know, you buy it in these hanks, and obviously now with fish end coming into the market, it's it's less than half the price for the EP fiber. You pay about 90 rand for the the fish end. You're paying 40 rand, so it's it's a nice saving. And you can see there's a fair amount of material there. So, when when choosing the fiber, I like to go about pencil thickness. So. I'm going to take my light color first, the one that's going to go at the bottom, and I'll take the section like this, cut it, take it halfway, and I'm going to cut this in half. Obviously, I've just done this a few times, so I know what the length should be. Like that. Excellent. Okay. So now, you have to remember that you're going to be folding the material over the whole time. So when you're starting out, this end here is actually going to be at the bottom. So it's going to get trimmed down. So I always tie it a little bit more than halfway. Let's get my thread to the back again. Okay. Give it a couple of wraps. And I take this section and you fold it backwards. Now, I try to keep the material stacked on top of each other so you're building the profile of the fly. Because uh, the profile helps it swim straight and all of that and give it its action in the water. And I just catch those materials over there. Give it a couple of wraps and that's our first section done. So what I'd like to do now is tie in a lateral line. And I'm sure you guys have seen this over and over, but you, you don't cut your material, you fold, take it like this, fold it in half. Just get it more or less half. And I make sure that this sits nice in the middle on top. Okay, now it's time for our next color. So now we do the same with the olive, fold it in half. And the flight takes a bit of practice, but after you've tied a couple, you get your proportions in the amount of material right, so it doesn't take too much, and the material is quite cheap, so it's not it's not an expensive learning curve either. So. Okay, cut it in half again. And now it's going to be the other way around. So the section that we're tying in first is going to end up forming the tail. So you can see I match my original, I match the longest fibers here. And also, I'm not going to tie on top of this material. So now I just move it a little bit forward, and you just you're edging up further and further, and just building onto the hook, so that you're not building up too much bulk.
There we go, and over the top, and remember we're building a profile, so you're not letting the materials spray to the side too much. And there you can see we're already starting to build a quite a nice profile for the fly. So, now the next thing is to turn the hook around. Do we still have focus? Yes, we do. So now I take the lighter colored material. And once again, I fold it in half. And we tie it in. So now this is just going to start forming the belly. Now before I was making sure that I was stacking the material on top of each other to form the profile, but now we've obviously done that. So now you want to just make sure that you, before you tighten up, just press down so that you, you're covering the, the, the sides of the hook. So it's in essence covering the thread. If you battle this uh, empty ballpoint pen actually helps to get materials under control. Have a look on that side, that yeah, looks about right. Now I'm sure you can epoxy or you know use bug, the light bug, bug bond to in between the steps to actually strengthen this fly. But I must say after a week on uh, Jacini, I didn't have any flies falling apart or any problems with them. So I don't think it's really necessary. Okay, same process. Take our olive, fold it in half. See, now all I'm doing is before I tighten the, the thread, I'll just make sure that it covers everything in line with the olive. Again, fold it back. Okay, and now the red. I do about a quarter of the materials that I do here. You really don't need a lot because you're obviously going to fold it in half. So, and this would obviously be just as a hot spot or a trigger or just you know, imitating the gills. And I did find the flies with the, with the hot spot in did perform better than the ones without. And I'll just make sure that I tie that nice and center so that once we trim the fly, that the gills are showing evenly at the bottom. Okay. And then the last of the white. So with the last layer, what I often do is I don't actually take it back immediately. I just the pen. And I'll first tie the top section so I can fold everything back and make sure that all the thread is covered.
Okay. This is the focus we do. Nice thing about this is your eyes don't have to be that. If you go bigger, you, it, your, this has to be quite a nice finish. But uh, if you, with this size, you know, it's going to get covered by the, the stick on ice. So it's not too critical to have a really neat finish on here. And there we go. I don't have a tool that I just do a couple of half hitches. It's going to get epoxied anyway or bug bonded. So, and then we there we have it. There's the stage one of the fly complete. Now, as you can see, it goes quite quickly. So, you know, obviously it goes quicker if you're not talking in between. Okay, so now I must try to trim this thing so that you guys can see. Hey. The trimming that I normally do is I'll just do the trimming in two stages. Get an autofocus in there. I was going to do a light trimming so I'd get it ready for the eyes, and then after the eyes are on and we've, you know, glued the fly then we'll do the the, the final stages of the uh, of the trimming so this does take a bit of practice so I suggest when you get one right put it aside so you can always use that as reference for you know future flies that you're tying And it, you guys see the way I'm trimming it, I'm always trimming against the materials, against the fibers. Why do you do that? It gives you more control and you don't end up cutting it straight down the, down, down the material. So it, you're always cutting at an angle. So you don't have any sharp edges or edges and ending at 90 degrees. So it, everything just, you know, stays, it just looks more natural. And also you... It takes you a little bit longer to trim, but you don't overcut and you know end up ruining the fly and having to start all over. Okay, so that's I think the first stage trimming for, and now we're ready for the eyes. Gavin, did you remember super glue? Yes. <laughs> no, I've got. I was just, I was just wondering. Okay, for the super glue, use the gel because the thin stuff just runs all over the show and will ruin your fly. That's it. Yeah, I've got mine from Rowan as well. And then, because I had to do about 50 of these about two months ago, I realized that it's better using two needles. One to get your eyes off the actual sheet and then one for the super glue part itself. Good thing we've got spare. <laughs> So those, those round eyes, um, fall off, 
Well, the, the, the Domas. Yes, the Domas, they, they look pretty and everything. And I was also, I started tying with them, but they don't last. And it's not fish, it's just casting that makes them, like, come off. And they double the price, if not more. So just plain stick on eyes. We've got bug bond, so we'll, we're covering everything. Okay, so just get that right. The first one's generally not that difficult because okay, I try to get it centered on the hook shank, and then when you've got it in position, just give it a good squeeze. You can see the material compressing, and that's why I do the, the trimming in two stages, so that you know you, you never know what material is going to do until you've got your eyes on properly. Okay. Got it. Trick between putting enough super glow on and too much. Obviously, when you squeeze it, you often get the fly the eyes stuck to your fingers. Now we've already got some super glue in there, so I don't have to overdo the gluing this time. Okay. Another trick that I've recently learned is with, with your UV torch, with your bug bond. You, you've got about uh, you know, one of the guys said 44 flies per, per, per set of batteries. Now, I'd probably find it'll go a little bit less. So, I've got about 30 flies per per battery that I use. And then I throw the battery out and I replace it. I, I've started with the rechargeables. Don't use it. That I just don't have the backbone to get, you know, to get the light to work properly. Is there a tube for this? Mine's almost done, so take about an hour to get it to run out. <laughs> this is a thick one. They actually had bug bond thin, but uh. I actually stopped them and I said, no, we need the thick one for this. So the trick with this is to make sure that you apply the glue about a half a millimeter past into the materials so that it soaks into material and therefore obviously locking the eye into place. You know, the super glue is just to, to get it there for the, for the actual UV. Yeah, no, I'm aware of that. We just don't shine it into your eyes. So avoid eye contact. I'll remember that. Right. 
seconds? Yeah, 10 to 15 seconds. Depends how fresh my batches are, but I replace these in the car park. Then I find that if you put them in direct sunlight, obviously not through a window because that doesn't help. Um, it just helps the final curing. Let's get that to move over a little bit. Okay, so now we're ready for the final trimming and then our fly's done and then we can use copic milkers to put lateral bands on or whatever the species that you're actually trying to imitate. Now, also the reason why I like this hook is it, it's got a big enough wire gauge to, if you trim this nicely, so that the hook acts as a kill. So it makes it swim through, and, you know. So obviously I like to have my, my hook bend exposed when I trim this. Also, the material is heavy on scissors, so I've put my anvils and my Dr. Slicks and everything aside, and I'm using these very expensive 35 Rand from Shamdo. Not yet, but with lodges, I will be looking at putting some weight in. Uh, I'll try it out and see how they swim. If it doesn't make this fly flip upside down, but I do believe if you trim it right, that a bit of lead in it will won't make it uh, go, you know, go stupid. So. You know, just always use your actual hook as a bit of weight to, to get your fly to react nicely or to, to sit or to swim correctly. That's it, I'm using a DR5, so... And that's it, we're about done. So... You know, I'd always like to do homework, depending on where, where I'm going, to see exactly what the bait fish looked like. Because, uh, I mean, the bait fish at Jacini, they had nice blunt heads compared to, you know, other tilapia species that I've come across. Uh, John actually sent me the photos of, of those tilapia. So, that's why I thought this fly would be best to imitate the tilapia from Jacini. So, thanks, John. There we have it. So, I mean, you can trim all night long on this, and now you can do your copic markers. But the fly is quick to tie, and it's, you know, once you get used to trimming it, it's. it's See how nicely the gills come through? Yeah. It's a slim, it's not 
That's it, yeah. It's a slim profile. So, which also makes it track nicely in the water. So, and the only times I had this file in Jacini was when it was filing against the leader itself. The fly never filed around the hook, ever. Not once. Not in a, in a, in a whole week. Very easy because the first false cast it's dry and you can go. So I was fishing this on a nine weight, but I think I'm sure if I had a DR5 on my seven weight it would have done the same. But I was out casting guys on drop shot outfits on my on my with my nine weight. Not not every now and then consistently. So yes. yeah, you got 38 fish between three of us and I got 20, so I was happy. <laughs> Do you want to mark it? You can do. Yeah. So generally for, for marking, I mean, this is not going to obviously show up on our projector. I've got a, I like to use a piece of paper, and then what I do is I just take a ruler and I mark off one and a half centimeter gaps, one centimeter gaps. Now, I don't stick to it, but it just gives me a reference to actually use in terms of putting marks on it. So a trusty copy marker. So you're talking it as opposed to straightening. That's it. And uh, and also like see you can see I put it down. Otherwise you just got no no control of the materials itself. I mean, these copic markers are also available in such a nice range. There's, you can literally, there's not much limit that you have to what you can do here. Correct. Exactly, yeah. These match the photos you sent me, yeah? Huh? 